Hey guys, happy Sunday. Um, I did not plan to come over here and shoot this video, but it's funny because it's evening, right? And um, I'm sitting by my kitchen window where I never sit. I never sit at this kitchen table. Ever. Um, I should probably try more though. But in this condo, the way it's set up, I just never really find myself sitting at my kitchen table. It's very, this area of the kitchen is, is cramped. So um, I don't find myself coming in here like I used to. Of course, now I'm starting to clean. Um, I used to at my old condo, which I loved. I loved the layout of my old condo, but I had neighbors, if you guys recall, neighbors from hell. Um, so, cute pigeon outside, sorry. Um, and I used to sit at my kitchen table a lot more because it was really nice. I was up on the second floor and my kitchen table would look out over the back and it was just very serene and peaceful. Um, so I really never sit in here, but there was something that was telling me, actually it wasn't something, it was someone, it was my uh, PR agent who has been dying to actually do PR for me for like three years and we're actually going to be doing some stuff coming up. Um, with my book um, and some online courses and some fitfulential stuff. I mean, really just everything is coming together and I'm, I'm excited, so excited. But I wanted to shoot this video specifically to answer some of the questions. A lot of you have been writing to me on several subtopics of the um, changes that I've been making, or specifically, let's say, the changes I've been making because of the bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment um, that I'm doing right now, or that I'm taking. I'm not quite sure of the best way to say that. But this video I wanted to focus on, and hopefully I'll make it brief, I'm only at two minutes. Um, is that right? Wow. Um, on A lot of you have been asking me, like, what am I eating now? So before I go any further, I feel like I have to do this. Um, don't want but full disclosure, you guys know me. I am not a doctor. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a trainer. I'm not telling you what to eat. So when I share with you guys what I'm doing, it's like more of a means of discovery. And I want you to do your own, um, your own research and find out what works for you. And specifically, if you have um, hormonal issues, then you need to get blood work done and you need to have a doctor look at your blood work and diagnose you and then you can make the changes in your diet like I am. Now the changes that I've made most recently that I'm going to share with you are a result of the research that I've done specifically to address the insulin resistance that I have. I have insulin resistance and I have hypothyroid. Um, so and, and both of those areas it is pretty significant to have both of those but it also explains why I was having such frustration with the fact that I never had a problem, you know, building muscle, right? You guys, Mr. Flo? Um, what my problem has been, especially the past probably four years, is probably, I didn't realize it, but my hormones were getting worse and worse and worse, is, you know, it was all around my core. Um, that's where I just was getting thicker. It's just the only way to describe it. And if you read a lot of books for men and women with hormonal imbalance, particularly women, most of them will describe themselves that way. They'll say, I, I felt thicker around my middle. Just, you know, it's not like you get a big fat roll. It's just, you feel thicker. There's that paper towel analogy of, you just feel like there's, you know, kind of a, a, a thickness around your waist. So it's very frustrating because I would feel like I'd make progress in every area but that area, right? And so for me, as I've gotten into about eight or nine weeks of the bioidentical treatment, and I started to see some changes there, but again, I could tell that it certainly wasn't like, bam, the light switch is on and I'm no longer insulin resistant and I'm no longer hypothyroid. When you are insulin resistant and hypothyroid, that's where that, that's one of the primary um, symptoms is um, you know difficulty losing fat but also you either gain fat around your mid, your midsection or your core and then you have a, a difficult time losing it. 
So for me, yeah, you know, there's a big part of me that's massively impatient. And so I started to do a lot of reading. And I shared all of this with Dr. Riska. And I said, look, I'm doing this reading for two reasons. A, I want to understand everything. I don't want to just come to you and have you say, Kelly, you need to take this, 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 and this. And I'm like, okay, I, I, like, I want to understand how I got here, what caused this. And I'm certainly sharing that with you guys so that hopefully you can learn from my lessons sooner. Um, but I also want to understand how I can make changes in my lifestyle so that I can taper down from this stuff and not be dependent on, you know, everything that I'm taking, right, from a medicinal perspective. Because while I do know that as you get older, I'm 46, you guys, um, you know, there will be a big portion of the treatment that I'm on that I will always be on because you're always balancing your hormones. Your hormones are always in decline as you get older. So there's a treatment that you will continue, but it should be, based on my understanding, you know, you kind of get your your levels if they're they're like crazy and they're like this. And you kind of get them so that they're slowly like this, right? And then you just keep them so that they're like this. That's a, just a completely made no sense, but it's just my visual way of showing you guys. Um, Dr. Riska says, it's funny, he shares that men are so much easier to fix with hormonal imbalance. If there's only one or two things that they have to fix and it's very easy and men respond very fast. And with women, he said, women, it's like an orchestra. Um, there's all, you know, there's this section and this section and this section and you have to tweak this and then that might affect this and then this might affect this. So it's very complicated. But um, because I'm seeing all of these changes in all of these other areas, and because um, I can see that the weight around my core is, um, it's, it's moving, I, I'm leaning out, I feel it, um, but it certainly wasn't as overnight as in my dreams I wanted to be. I knew going into this that I needed to give this a full year. I mean, that's the reality, is you have to give this six months to a year. Um, to really dedicate yourself and your body time to relax, get off the birth control pills, get things out of your system, give your body time to adapt, and yada, yada, yada. So, as I've been reading and understanding hypothyroidism and insulin resistance, um, and then it was also when Valerie Waters was in town, and she was hanging around with me in person, and she saw some of the food that I was eating, um, she had just made a couple of comments, and it was funny, she was very sweet. She goes, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, meaning Whitney, my trainer, who has been telling me what my diet plan is. Um, she said, but you know, if you are insulin resistant, you know, you shouldn't be having the Ezekiel toast, you probably should be reconsidering having white rice, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I texted Whitney that, and Whitney was like, I didn't know you were having Ezekiel bread for breakfast. So. You know, full disclosure with you guys, I wasn't hiding any of that from her, but Whitney and I are in different states and it's very difficult sometimes for her to log in and check my meal records that were in a Dropbox folder every single day. So my records were there and it was showing that, but you know, that was more of two busy women maybe not communicating as much because um, we're crazy busy. And also, um, you know, I frankly didn't think there was any problem with that. I got up every day and I was having either one or two slices of Ezekiel toast, and in my head, I don't know why I was thinking in my head that was gluten-free. Um, so let me, okay, let me wrap that part of this up because I, I really want to keep this short. <laughs> Do I not say that every video? And then I end up having like a 12-minute video. Um, so when Valerie was here, that kind of, ha I think really that was the big, when she said that to me, and I felt so stupid, not because she meant to make me feel stupid. I just felt stupid that here I'd been kicking butt since I'd been home, really taking my diet, and I just mean diet approach, um, very seriously, and yet I, I'd made such a foolish choice, and I was having it for breakfast every morning. And on the sushi side, um, I had grown so tired of ordering salmon sashimi all the time that I had gotten in the habit of several times when we would get um, a group lunch for the company. You know, I'd go, oh, you know what, I'll have that Alaskan roll that's salmon and, or it's um, tuna and avocado and this vinegar on the top, but it was rice because I'm like, you know what, I've always had sashimi. This is not a problem. 
So it's, it's little things like that, guys. For somebody else, that wouldn't make a difference. But for me, when you're hypothyroid and insulin resistance, those are the little things that can really kind of keep you crawling along versus kind of getting to that jog. And that's what I'm looking to do. I'm, I'm looking to use my nutrition to complement what I'm doing with the hormonal, bioidentical hormonal replacement stuff so that all of those things can work together. I have brought all of this up. My doctor and I have discussed all of this. He is completely in alignment. So, you know, we're working there and then I'm communicating that to Whitney so that she knows what I'm doing as well. But as far as what I'm eating specifically, I will say this to you guys, that it's, it transitions really um, every week. I would say overall, um, I shared this with you guys in my last video, um, it's, I tend to eat a, a lot more real foods with the exception of um, some shakes. I probably have maybe two shakes a day. Now here's the other thing, Whitney had taken me off protein shakes but then I read that whey protein is very good for insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome, if, if you will. Um, so I do probably have um, one to two shakes a day. One of those now is Shakeology. I'm doing Shakeology um, because I've gotten more involved in Beachbody um, and I'm a coach, but not really just that. It's also, I've always known this. I tried Shakeology years ago. I mean, there is like every conceivable possible good thing on the planet from a nutritional perspective in that shake. And it tastes awesome. So um, I'd be crazy to be spending the money I am on supplements and not be doing a Shakeology shake um, every day. Um, so it tastes good. It kind of addresses my sweet tooth. Um, I like the idea of having like breakfast, shake, breakfast, shake, meal, you know. Um, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, potentially two shakes. Um, and, and I am writing down as I'm in this transitional stage, you know, what I'm eating, but what I tend to do is this, and again, I'm going to say this, it changes kind of every week because I'm also talking to a couple of food, um, food prep meal delivery service companies and, um, likely will be getting that. So I will have the ability to have, <laughs> this is a long run on sentence, um, I won't have to worry as much about food prep myself because that's always been a problem. It, it's just always, I, I, no matter how much I try, I just don't get the food prep done. And then I end up ordering sushi all the time. And that's expensive and irresponsible and, and that's when I get tired of food. Um, but right now I tend to get up every day and I've cut out these ego breads. So what I do is I'll have three Eglin's Best organic eggs scrambled. That's it. I don't put anything in them. I just, as Valerie calls it, she calls it a framble. You just put it in the, and you start making it like it'd be fried eggs, but you just scramble it all up. And then I have my Bulletproof coffee. My Bulletproof coffee is just uh, brewed flavored coffee with five grams um, or four grams of coconut oil, organic coconut oil and stevia, and then almond extract. And I mix that all up. Um, so I probably have two cups of that uh, in the morning. And then I have, before my workout, a protein shake. And then usually for lunch, I'm having a salad uh, with some kind of protein on it. Um, sometimes I will cut up, you know, low glycemic fruit in the salad. So like apricots or strawberries or, or raspberries um, because I am allowed to have fruit. And actually there is a certain fruit that is very good for um, insulin resistance. Um, low glycemic, looking on the low glycemic side. Um, I don't ever have fruit by itself, um, you know, and I don't ever really have carbs, uh, the carbs that I'm eating by itself. Everything I have is a protein meal. Um, so then I would maybe have Shakeology in the uh, afternoon. It, again, it satisfies my sweet tooth. Um, for dinner, um, if I'm not going to have sushi like sashimi, I'm trying to get more into having more fish um, or chicken with a vegetable. It's pretty simple. You know, like steak, four ounces is my um, amount of protein that I'm doing, by the way. Um, so four ounces of steak, four ounces of salmon, four ounces of chicken, whatever, with either asparagus or broccoli. Um, in the summer, I don't like to cook as much. Oh, 15 minutes, dang it. Um, but it's, it's pretty simple. Like I love to have steak and asparagus and I cook asparagus on the grill with just a little bit of, um, 
you know, this olive oil that I get from Greece. I'll put the, the link in below. Um, you can order it from Pillion Estates. We have a discount with Fit Fluential. It's direct from Harvest. It's wonderful. Um, and then a little bit of sea salt on it. I mean, I keep it really simple. I have to be honest with you guys. You know, I'm pretty, I'm very satisfied with the stuff I'm eating. You know, my friend Sherry was texting me today, like a douchebag, and sending me pictures of donuts she was eating. And yeah, of course I'd love to have a donut. But at this point, I guess I'm kind of so proud of the changes I've made. I'm also, hold on. I have this huge thing, and I just buy several of these, and then I refill them with filtered water. But I do drink a whole gallon of water a day. Um, unsweetened iced tea. Um, and then that clear, sparkling soda. I get a ton of it at Walmart. Um, I, I'm okay with what I'm eating. When I do get um, a sweets craving, it'll, it'll be satisfied by, oh, cherries are low glycemic and very good. And I think if I'm correct, they're like one carb per uh, cherry. Um, so that might be something I might take two cherries and have it as like a snack and not worry about having a protein shake with it. But like I wouldn't have a whole apricot or um, a bunch of strawberries and no protein. But a couple cherries, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, I feel good. I definitely can see a change since I have cut out the Ezekiel bread, since I've cut out the, I wasn't really having oatmeal, but um, you know, haven't had sushi with rice um, since Valerie's been here. I haven't had Quest bars since she's been here. Um, so, you know, again, not to say I'll never have that stuff. It's just, this is be me being really, really focused and really um, specific um, and intentional about my diet choices until I get to a normal insulin phase. I'm getting my blood work redone this week, so it's gonna be interesting to see where that stands. I have a feeling Dr. Risk is gonna put me back on the metformin, potentially increase my um, nature throid, uh, which addresses my thyroid. Because um, we did, we, dis we discussed um, the whole fat loss. He's happy with the fat loss that I've had, um, but you know, I did tell him I would love to accelerate that if I could. I would love to be able to make my um, fat loss goal this year, and it looks like I'm on my way there, but hey, if I could speed it up a little bit, I'm all for it. So hopefully that gives you guys an answer. Um, you know, nothing real extravagant. I know I had shared earlier that I wanted to um, start making new recipes every week. That might have to be on hold until I get this whole thing um, a little bit more normalized and then I can focus on having things like you know Bill Phillips that body for life chicken enchiladas recipe I need to avoid corn for a while that's something I have to do which I had been having a black bean and red pepper and corn salsa for a while had to cut that out so um, sometimes it's a little bit of a, a bummer but I'm to the point now where I'm comfortable and it's become a little bit routine and it's pretty cool so of course, I did a 17-minute video when I thought this would be an 8-minute video. If you guys have questions on this, leave it down below, and I'll answer that in my next video. And hopefully, I can get myself to do shorter videos, more concise. And I am going to be talking to you guys about uh, my book that I will be putting out and also some courses um, with some experts on all of this stuff. So you don't have to just listen to me blab about it. But I will talk to you tomorrow.